Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Generally Irritable Special Election Season Edition. Uh, I'm really excited to be back in Burlington and getting to do some live streams with candidates for city council, maybe even school board. If anybody wants to reach out, anybody watching, uh, if you're a school board candidate or a uh, city council candidate and you are a uh, close to center moderate and to the right. So if you're a Republican, if you're a centrist, if you're a truly an independent, uh, I would love to have you on the show and uh, let some people hear about your candidacy. Uh, I'm not, I can't lie. I am not a, uh, what is that? I am, I am, a, I am a biased news organization. Uh, we here at Generally Irritable are really looking to, um, to help promote conservative values and um, and candidates that we think are valuable, who use reason and data to make decisions, not just their emotions. And so that's I'm actually really excited to have Alex Stith on tonight. He is running for city council in Ward 7 of Burlington. Uh, the current city councilor is uh, Ollie Dang. Uh, and nice enough man. I like Ollie. We have each other's phone number. We've talked. Um, but I haven't been happy with all of the decisions that he's made on the council. And while I think that it's important to take feelings into consideration and to be empathetic and compassionate, we also have to make sure that the things being suggested are being tracked and followed through and, and, and discover if they really work. Um, and a lot of the things that we're seeing from our current city council and the mayor just don't work. And so um, when I first met Alec last, I think it was last year, or maybe it was even in 2020, uh, when there was some stuff going on with the bond for the fire station, I was like, this guy clearly is thinking about things. And I was really excited to see that he was running. He is an engineer and um, anybody who knows engineers, I'm an accountant uh, so I like engineers. I, I like to process, be rational, reasonable, logical, right? There's compassion and empathy in there. But let's first start with what are the facts and what is true? Uh, and, and so I think that that's something that Alec brings to the table. And so I'm really, really excited to have him on today. And uh, so before I bring him into the live stream, I just want to take a moment to say thank you to my Patreon supporters. Uh, I actually um i never promote this stuff you guys i i bring my content to you and i don't normally ask uh for you know like share and subscribe but i'm realizing how much stuff how much that stuff matters uh conservative content especially does get throttled in uh, on social media it really does so your um your likes your shares your follows all really do make a difference. And what else makes a difference are my Patreon supporters. Um, I have Kurt Wheeler and uh, Keisha Gathright are both monthly supporters on Patreon. So um, after we get done, I'll try to remember to put, not I'll try, I will put a link, a pinned uh, comment in the, in the comments section for people if you can and you're able to be a monthly subscriber, even at $2 a month. Uh, that really goes a long way to helping me uh, transition from being a full-time accountant and having an accounting practice to being able to produce content um, and the news around the state of Vermont to you, my viewers. So blah, blah, that was awkward. Eventually I'll be less awkward when asking for things and asking for money. I better get good at that. Speaking of getting good at asking for money, I wonder how Alec is doing with his fundraising. Alec! Stith, welcome, welcome, welcome to Generally Irritable. Well, thank you, Erica, for that wonderful introduction. I appreciate it. You are welcome. I want to make sure I don't like, you know, anybody watching is like, oh, my God, Alec is a Republican. I didn't say that. <laughs> OK, I didn't say that. You are running as a Democrat. Is that correct, Alec? That is correct. However, okay. I did receive the endorsement of both the uh, Democratic Committee and the GOP. OK. And that's because, you know, we of the of the Republican Party, the Burlington GOP, um, 
I, I've said this before. I, I don't care. I don't care if you're a Democrat. I don't care if you're a Republican. I don't care what you are. If you can do math, I will vote for you. <laughs> that I, and I appreciate that. Yeah. I'm an independent minded person and uh, you know, math is right up my alley analytics <laughs> and uh, you know, being a data driven person and, and understanding that you have to be pragmatic is it's kind of in my nature and that is really what uh, getting an engineering degree is all about it shows that you can think analytically oh oh uh, i that, like it okay that's that's so, really the, the oh, distilled sorry. down no 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 sorry. okay that's okay. okay so alec um why don't you take a couple minutes and and do your like introductory pitch right i'm alec this is what i'm about i got a family they're cool. You got great picture. You got a good looking family for the record. I appreciate that. I, appreciate I love that. your pictures. It's all, it comes all from my wife, you know, that, that, that's <laughs> I, so, but uh, yeah, no, my name is Alec uh, and I am an engineer and uh, my wife and I moved to Burlington uh, over a decade ago and we've lived in the new North end now for a number of years. And prior to purchasing our house, we lived in the old North end for uh, a a decade and we saved in a very small apartment and we did that so that way we could afford the down payment on our house uh, here where we want to be and start a family and since moving here we've had two children who are both awesome i have a daughter and a son uh, and my daughter being the younger of the two and the newest addition and my wife is now a stay-at-home mom for the time being to raise our family. And that was a decision that we made together. Uh, she's taking a leave of absence from her job and she was a school counselor prior to doing that. And so we planned this and it took a long time of sitting, saving and thinking and budgeting and really understanding where can we live within our means where we want to live in Burlington. And we've known we wanna live in Burlington. We know we wanna stay in Burlington. And being able to plan that out and save uh, and then move here has been really just an amazing opportunity that we're incredibly thankful for. Uh, and so now, you know, I, I realized I wanted to, to get involved after talking to a couple of my neighbors. They approached me independently about the state of the city and the state of the council and things that are being brought to the council that don't necessarily fall under a local view uh, or under the purview of the city council and maybe divisive things and, and other things that didn't make a lot of logical sense. And what I really would hope to do is bring that civility and local focus back to the city council. And I'm passionate about a few things, you know, the environment, public safety, uh, you know, being affordable. And I think that that really resonates with a lot of people because we want to stay here. You know, we want to be able to live here and grow our family and have our children grow up here. And that's important to me. That is, I love to hear that. Um, I have been very blessed to be uh, living in the home that my mom grew up in. You know, awesome. this is, this is, this home has been in my family since it was built in 1963. And so I just, I love that family focus and that, and that idea to me, that's like thinking about the future and thinking about legacy and how do we take care of not only what we have to do now, but also make sure we set it up for the next generation? Exactly, exactly. You have to look and have that foresight into decisions that you're making now. How will they impact the future? And that can be anything from, you know, we put solar on our house. And uh, that was one of the first things we did, as well as weatherizing our attic and adding insulation. And, you know, I'm a mechanical engineer, so I like to do a lot of that work uh, by myself, but through the support of nature of uh, Burlington Electric and Vermont Gas, you know, they have programs that you can take, uh, take advantage of. And it wasn't just thinking the now, it was looking at what's the return on investment for the, you know, solar, for example, and after seven years, it's going to be paid back. And you look at the rising cost of electricity and things, and not just the cost, but how is it good for the environment? And so, you know, you don't want to waste energy. So we insulated our attic, we air sealed it, we did ventilation, we put the, uh, you know, solar panels on, switched everything to LED light bulbs because it's it's the right thing to do, but it also is making the house more comfortable. Uh, and those types of programs, I think, are incredibly valuable and and things that we should look at. Those are low hanging fruit things. Now, I have to ask though, a lot of those programs are paid for by tax dollars, so actually that comes that makes Burlington less affordable so while those programs are good in that they help people 
if it makes Burlington less affordable, do you think that we should continue to support those kind of measures? Well, that's a complex question because while you can say it would make it less affordable, you yourself, if you take advantage of it, are kind of getting your own money back and then it would pay itself back with the offsets that you would gain. So if you have an incredibly leaky house and you're wasting a lot of energy, then insulating an air ceiling can save you a lot of money. Uh, you know, and solar off that, that again, you know, the investment is large. That's a federal, you know, kind of program, but the, uh, the net metering, you know, that helps pay you back and then you have a return on investment. So mm-hmm. while some of those programs may increase the cost, you have to look at the overall net good and then overall, what does it do for you personally? So I know for me, when I did the analysis on my house, it was beneficial for me to take advantage of that program. And overall, it saved the environment as well, which is something, uh, you know, you don't want to waste energy. Okay, well, I'm good. We can we're going to argue about this. But hold on, I'm getting a weird. Any of our viewers that are watching, are you getting an interruption in the feed? I'm getting this weird feedback over here that says interruption and signal. Can somebody comment? So hold on. And but before I forget, anybody watching, this is not a one-way conversation. If you have questions for Alec, put them in the comment section. Um, and if and if they're good questions, as long as you're not being rude or crazy, um, I'll read your question and have Alec read it. Um, I've I never have weird viewers, Alec, just for the record, but you know, every once in a while people get all hype. Um, like when we're talking about this stuff, because I'm gonna, I'm like, mm. I want to argue with you about the uh, the Vermont gas thing because we did we did that we had the energy audit. They said it was going to save the whole house about two hundred dollars a year. So that's me yeah, that's, and my that's tenants. Not a lot. No, and guess how much it was going to cost me? Oh, probably six thousand. Fourteen thousand dollars. <laughs> yeah, so that payback is rough. That that uh, wouldn't make years. a lot of sense. But Literally that makes, 80 years. <laughs> that means that your house from a weatherization standpoint is already where it needs to be, you know. And if you look at the city, the city has a goal uh, that, that they're trying to reach. So if you look at the, the yeah. larger picture of that and see the forest for the trees, you know, the overall benefit uh, out of some of the major egregious, you know, houses that are leaking air or, you mm-hmm. know, could use this, the overall net goal is, is positive. So, yeah. Well, that's where it, that's where it kind of is is an individual, you know. Uh, I, I know I see you looking at me. It's it's kind of individual. Giving you the stink eye, Alec. <laughs> oh no, it's good. It's good to have disagreements. And you know, going back to when you said questions from from viewers, yeah, is I will take any feedback from anybody, whether it's uh, positive, negative, or indifferent. As long as it's constructive, feedback doesn't yeah. kill you and should be welcomed with a thank you. Uh, and I'll say true. that that first and foremost. And yeah, so, well, and. Um, you know, uh, I'm always going to say stuff like that is bad just for the record. And just because I am a small government conservative. And so I think anytime that you're taking, and I'm very libertarian. So I'm the girl that puts hashtag taxes are theft on half my videos and like abolish the fed and stuff like that. So let's just start there. Um, okay, we have one question from Michael. This is not a serious question, but I'm gonna and he can't vote for you. So just oh, for the record, it, but it doesn't it doesn't matter. It's good to answer questions. I but I'm going to because Michael picked for and anybody like this is uh, this is not a paid advertisement. Michael Valdez, Top Cat, uh, is an awesome driver. I have him pick me up from the airport whenever I'm flying in or out because it's just nice. He's got a nice car and it doesn't smell weird and he doesn't play bad music. And he's professional. He's like an actual driver, like not like an Uber driver. I mean, like actual like driver person that's paid for it, like legit. So anyway, um, so I'm humoring him. He said, what's your favorite kind of taco, beef or chicken? Ooh, I don't know. I mean, if, if only those two choices, that's all I that's all I get. I'm going to go with a beef taco in that case. Yeah, I think that wins. I don't know if what Michael's going to say, but that would be my choice. Um, <laughs> no, seriously. Okay, um, let's see. Brian says five by five, currently only one interruption. I don't know what five by five means, Brian, but you said only one interruption. Okay, so that's good. So whatever it's doing on this on my screen is not continuously happening. That's and to be good. fair, I don't see anything on my screen. 
uh, okay. coming up. So that's good. Michael says chicken. You're wrong, Michael. Oh, man. You are dead wrong. You know, I appreciate his input. I, you know, you can't please everybody, but I appreciate his opinion. Yeah, we're vetoing that one. Um, <laughs> no, but seriously, um, one of the things I really like about your platform, I'm going to go to your, I'm going to share your website with people. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Um, so public safety, housing and affordability, local focus environment. Okay. So local focus, we, you mentioned a, a couple times, I think. Um, what is, tell us a little bit more about what you mean by local focus. Yeah. So what I mean is not bringing forth resolutions that are on a state or on a national or international level, you know, keeping mm. politics for Burlington in Burlington and keeping it serious, you know, not bringing forth uh, non-binding resolutions or, or the like, or even mm. discussing subjects that there is no influence from the city for. So like, so like if since Burlington City Council is about governing Burlington, you should be focused on Burlington. Correct. And and I I actually really appreciate what you said about um, being serious and the non-binding resolution stuff. To me, that's political theater um, and really kind of a waste of time for the city council to be doing. Yeah, I know a lot of people feel, you know, talking to them that the council is fractured and you know, it gets distracted and sometimes divisive things get mm. brought up that really don't serve the people well. And mm. it should be about the people and for the people. And and that's what the city needs to focus on. Keep it small and keep it about the city and bring that civility back mm. and that focus back to the local politics that really are what should be discussed and the only things that should be discussed. Um, and I like that, it. That's, what I, that's what I mean. So make it less of i guess the, the the people don't feel that it's taken seriously you know or that it's not about them or for them and yeah. you know I, I think we need to get back to that well and i almost am of the mind that local politics shouldn't even be partisan i agree um, I, I know some states uh some places it's not and personally that would be my preference i'm not really sure what uh, a D or an R or an I or an L or a P or whatever it, behind your name matters when it comes to needing to make sure that the water stays on. Exactly. And our it infrastructure doesn't, doesn't fall apart. It, it doesn't matter what the letter next to your name is. What matters is making the right decision for the community. And yeah. that's why the GOP as well as the Democratic Committee both support me because it doesn't it doesn't matter. It's, it shouldn't be partisan. It mm. should be whatever is the best logical decision to help the city move forward. I like it. Okay. So tell me about this first one, this first quadrant. That tells me that's important. I might be reading into it, Alec. Public safety is very important, uh, and it's on the forefront of a lot of people's minds, myself yeah. included. You know, And the way that the public safety <laughs> initiative for cutting the police through attrition went down I do not believe that that is the right way. I think a lot of people see that it was not the right way to go. And if you think about it, the plan should have been in place for refunding if you're going to defund long before the defunding uh, cord was pulled on that. So, mm. you know, if shifting funding over to mental health and substance abuse is the right plan, and that's what, uh, say, the CNA report or other communities or and other communities that are similar sized went through, that's wonderful, but we need to have the plan in place. We need to have people trained mm -hmm. and ready to do the job. So when officers do leave through attrition and we get down to the number that is recommended or what we think or other people think and the data shows that we should be at, those positions are full and ready to go. The dispatchers know who to call who needs to be at a given situation is ready and trained. There's a long lead time for training on any job. You know, I'm a manufacturing guy, so there's a long lead time on raw materials and getting people trained. And you have to think about those things. It's not an instantaneous backfill. I, I wonder if you've ever had to do this where, like when I've had to implement a new accounting system as an example for a client, we run both systems concurrently. So we don't just stop Correct. using their old accounting software and then just start using the new accounting software. 
we there first has to be like a download of the information then we have to double check that it's not corrupted and that it's good and in the meantime we're still doing all of our regular accounting uh in the old system and then we're slowly making sure this new system is working correctly exactly all the bugs are worked out and then once we know and it's and it's running alongside then we switch Exactly. And, and my company did that when we transitioned to a newer ERP system from an older system. You know, you yes. run them concurrently, you bring the stakeholders who are involved to the table and you actively engage them to gain their feedback and listen, actively listen to what they're saying and how we can mitigate the risk when we do transition into a new system. So we do that, you know, in, in work, we do this and we should do this in life and this, mm -hmm. we should do this in the way the government is, is run. Uh, plan, yeah. do, check, act, you know, PDCA. Oh. Those those types of methodologies, mm. same thing with, say, double loop management, where you get your feedback back and you make adjustments and you move. Those are the fundamental principles of making solid data-driven decisions. What do you think, If and I'm, I'm totally asking you to speculate here, and so you can decline to answer, um, but do you have an idea of why this was so hastily done? I, I can't speculate because I can't get inside other people's heads. Um, yeah. So I really can't comment and I, I wouldn't try to, to do that because they That's have fair. different views, different opinions. And, you know, those same opinions should be listened to and understood. Uh, but I can't speculate as to why, why they were made without getting, you know, w without that. You can't be yeah, in somebody's head. Right, exactly. And I, I think that that's what, you know, for me, I, I don't want to speak to motive. But I will say it seems like our city council makes a lot of emotional decisions. People get um, very emotional about a topic one way or another. And it's like, it just has to be done right now instead of like, no, let's work this out first and make sure what we're saying is is reasonable. Correct. And you have and a plan in place to actually act on you know you plan it you do it you check it you act it pdca you know i'll, I'll go back to that because that really is a way to make a data-driven mm -hmm. uh, decision and, and you know then keeping with a consistent pattern for voting on the city council or making decisions you know with regards to public safety and you know you can't jump back and forth and try to go to two different sides you have to own the decision you make and then use data to drive yourself forward listening to the stakeholders and improve yeah uh, and, and that's the the whole crux of it is to try to do what is right to improve the community well and i think what was what was additionally alarming about that whole situation is once we saw what was happening and the and the mass exodus of of burlington police which I can't blame them for the record. Like I wouldn't want to stay in a police force where I'm hated and degraded by the people that I'm meant to protect. And then the people who are meant to stand up for me also demean and degrade me in public. It should that be is a partnership. Not... It should be a partnership between, you know, every department in the city and the yeah. people, not just and, the police, but uh, every department. And not to say, and again, like, just to be really clear, if there are people acting badly, they should be dealt with. So we'll, I just want to say that. I agree. Like, once we saw things were going badly and like, oh, crap, crime is going up and like, oh, and we don't have cops to deal with it. Like, they, they still didn't want to do anything about it. Yeah. And I mean, you see that on posts on Front Porch Forum mm. or the New North End, you know, bicycle thefts, car being cars being broken into people's houses, even uh, being broken into, you know, smaller level crimes or lower level crimes. But that makes people feel invaded. It makes people, do you know, not feel safe in their own house and they have to double check their cars are locked. They have to, you know, install cameras or motion sensors or security systems. And this is Burlington, mm. uh, yeah. you know, and people say that can't happen. But you know, you see the posts and it's almost a daily occurrence for people saying my car was broken, my car was stolen, my bike was stolen. Uh, people yep. were, were walking up around my backyard and th Super that makes sketch. you a little uneasy. Well, and think about all the, you know, the the um, older folks who live alone and can't necessarily defend themselves and single women, not to say that guys you know, are like singled out, but like you guys are less likely to be victimized. If I'm a bad guy, I'm going to go after the little ladies or the little old lady or little old man, you know? And like, 
I was hearing, and I live on the bike path, and I kept hearing from the police that doors are getting kicked in and people are robbing people on the bike path. And I'm going, where am I? And a lot of it is crimes of opportunity as well. People going around car doors, opening any, any unlocked vehicle. Uh, but that's not the community that you want to foster. You know, and you also want a partnership, again, with your police force and with other departments in the city. You should be looking at it as a partnership, not an adversarial relationship. Oh, that's what so. I'm saying. Okay. Michael says, for being a good sport to the question, you get a free ride from Top Cat <laughs> Express to the airport. Uh, I it's mean, the real I'm... motive. You know, you see the real motive. I appreciate <laughs> that. Though. Smart <laughs> advertising by, uh, by Michael. <laughs> But, oh, uh, I, I love I it. I appreciate it. Thank I you. Thank you. I'm not, I'm not flying anywhere uh, recently. Oh, so. well, maybe he'll give you another ride somewhere <laughs> else sometime. Maybe you want if you want to go out on a date with your wife somewhere and you I can bring the two small fancy. children right with me. You know, it's, no, uh... you get a babysitter. <laughs> no, what are you talking about? OK, uh, we got a few more years before that. OK, so here we go. We got um, housing and affordability. So we touched on that. You talked about, you know, wanting to, you know, what you and your wife did the decisions that you make and how you made excuse me and how you set yourselves up to be homeowners in the new north end yeah and, and then you know to dovetail onto that you know we can we grew our family right so we had uh, my son and then we said you know we want we want two children we wanted a four you know four person family mm -hmm. and this house is that we purchased is a little small it's a uh, it was a two-bedroom home which is modest and, and great. And we said, hey, you know, we have an opportunity to expand this to being a three bedroom home and subsequently did that. So now we have a three bedroom, uh, you know, bedroom addition on there. And part of housing and affordability is increasing the housing stock, but it's also changing some zoning regulations that would allow people to, you know, construct additional dwellings, you know, accessory dwellings or expand their homes if it's lot coverage percentage. Uh, or setbacks, you know, looking at things like that, how can you incentivize people to improve their houses and how can they grow if they need to, to stay in this city? Cause that was one of the issues that we had. Well, if we can't expand it, we're going to end up buying a house and selling it and moving into another one where we could have uh, you know, a little bit more room for each one of our children, but we didn't want to do that. We want to stay here. Um, and fortunately, I had, a, I had a friend who was a contractor. I hired him, paid him, yep. and uh, you know, did, he didn't give me a discount, but I, I paid him. And then I did a lot of the uh, finishing work and, and uh, other work by inside, myself. Yeah. And uh, at, at night and on the side, uh, I did that while I was going to to graduate school. So it was a lot of fun, a lot of dust, uh, and it was it was good. But uh, I have that I... hands-on experience from from jobs prior. So I love it. I and I love to hear you say dealing with some of the zoning because yeah. it is ridiculous and it is outrageous. And, you know, um, I, Merle, Merle Weinberger, you know, for, you know, you may like him, you may not, and that that's okay, but he did put forth the plan to increase the development of housing stock by relaxing some of the zoning regulations. Uh, yeah, except Miro Weinberger has also directed their city attorney to force us to remove one of our three units. So this is what we're literally being punished. There is a rule, a 60 day ordinance that says if your is if your unit is vacant for more than 60 days, you lose whatever special use permit you have. So we've had a triplex here since 1963. And so because several years ago, my family did a full renovation on one of the units, new floors, new kitchen, new cabinets, new bathtub, new sink, new bath, everything. Um, we are now being forced to remove it because it took more than 60 days. Yeah, well, I, well, I can't speak to your specific, uh, you and know. City, hold on, hold on. So uh, Sarah Carpenter, Ollie Dang, and Mark Barlow all refuse to talk to me about it. And so does the mayor. And they refuse to do anything, even though they know and acknowledge how stupid it is. Well, again, well, I can't speak to your specific instance. Uh, I would say that anybody should be listened to uh, and, and heard and at least listened to. So that that's really all I can say, but changing zoning to allow things maybe like yours, again, I don't know the exact specifics on yours, your, your case, but allow people to utilize their property and either add in a unit. Cause that could be a unit that could help somebody. Oh yeah. Right? I have to evict um, my tenants. I spoke so to I'm another, another gentleman I, who I'm going, who let to, me be clear. 
how they don't want people to evict and they want people to be good landlords and not be slum lords and not evict people. They are forcing me to evict my tenants. I just want to make sure that's clear. Yeah, so, I understand. Again, I, I don't know your the specifics of yours, so I can't gonna, really make any I comments as to why. Whatever you can. I want you on the ordinance committee. That's what I, I'm like making it. Alec, I'm making a personal request that you request to be on the take, ordinance you can't committee. Take, <laughs> you, you know, that's one thing about being nonpartisan is also no no special treatment for anybody. No, the but playing that, field should be you have to admit that's all, a stupid you know? rule. You have to admit that's a stupid rule. Yeah, I, you know that that rule. If it's vacant for more than sixty days, it revokes a special use. That that may not make much sense. So why why do you need a special? You know, we could get into this. Why you need a special use uh, instead of it just being? I I don't know. Because Again, we're in a low density residential area. Yeah. So changing some zoning are allowed. Changing some zoning and allowing things like that would be something that should be looked into. You know, uh, allowing people to build on their homes to expand so they can stay here you know i spoke to a gentleman who was interested in having a uh, a detached garage he wanted to change that into an accessory dwelling and he said well you know i don't think with the zoning i'd be allowed to do that it's like well yeah. that could add a unit or a short-term rental that could provide him income as well as tourism dollars so not something that necessarily should be done but should be looked into and at least discussed you know that's part of being innovative is not coming up with something new but using what you have in new ways well and i think it's really also what we talked about earlier which is uh what did you say plan plan do check act checked check are these rules that you implemented having the desired effect that they were implemented for I, I sincerely cannot imagine for 1,000 years why a rule like that would have been implemented. I, I really don't. I maybe, I, I really can't. I, I can't. I literally cannot think of one reason why that would be a rule. Um, you know, I, I but, off the top of my head, I can't, but I'm sure there was a reason and understanding what that is would be beneficial to find and, out if that reason is still valid. And that's what I'm saying. Like, whatever reason that you implemented this Maybe there should have been carve outs. Maybe there should have been like, oh, this is only for whatever or blah, blah, blah. And I'm not just talking about my rule. Um, I'm actually working on a documentary to uh, really highlight all the ways that Burlington uh, city zoning and stuff is actually uh, demonstrably harming uh, normal middle class, lower class folks. Um, a good friend of mine, um, is actually now selling her property because she it's like I'm over it they had uh one of their apartments in uh, one of the old um houses in the old north end so like downtown area um one corner of one room was a quarter inch too low so not the whole apartment not not even a whole room one corner of one room was only six foot 11 and three quarter inches and they forced her to remove that housing unit from the house yeah i can't i can't again without knowing exact specifics on rules in that for that specific situation i i can't really i can't comment but what i can say is you know expanding housing stock expands the tax base you know building new units allowing people to stay in their homes build additional rooms build accessory dwellings where applicable and where it makes sense allows the tax base to expand. Tax base expands overall. You know, money taken in by the city is spread out. Tax Economic activity goes out, up. Businesses go up. This Correct. is what I'm saying. Oh my God. See, this is what, see, see, I disagree with you about some stuff, right? But you can do math, Alec. This is what yeah, I'm talking about. It's like about. growing businesses, right? Incentivizing <laughs> people to start businesses in Burlington. You know. You... Well, and this is because what what is actually happening is the rise in in taxes and these zoning laws that are absolutely stupid, in my opinion. I'm not supposed to talk like that. My husband told me to stop calling things stupid, but they're stupid. Um, what that does in what it has the effect of doing is causing people to leave um you know how many families just keep leaving because they can't afford it anymore or it doesn't make sense or they can't expand their home or they're on uh fixed income and the tax increases are too much you know fill in the blank 
Yeah, and, I know. And people are stinging from the reappraisal right now. And we're getting so. a couple more bonds on the ballot in March. Yeah, one more bond, uh, I believe, is going on the vote on Monday, as well as a tax increase. Which is wild to me. And the school board budget is going up 13%, which I know that has nothing to do with you. But I just, I, I say to myself, what are these people thinking? Yeah, so it gives you even more, you know, of an idea about how we should be drawing businesses into the city and expanding our tax base in general. You know, yeah. And that, that's, that's one way to keep it affordable. As well as looking at places where you can be more innovative with, you know, your resources that you have in the city or departments in the city. You know, yeah. What are you, you know, you're looking at your, your overall operation, where can you be more efficient? And this is what I, what, what is so disgusting and shocking to me is when we're all, like you said, stinging from the reappraisal, I can't imagine what was going through them. And, and many of us had our businesses shut down. We lost money. We lost jobs. People got sick, et cetera, and so forth. And how irresponsible it is for our school commissioners and our city councilors and our mayor and the department heads to think that increasing, asking for even more money from us would be appropriate. Yeah, you know, so I can I can see both sides of the coin, though, on that one, because certain things, if you you know, the bond that's coming up uh, that they're going to vote on uh, tomorrow it is are necessary things or things for public safety. Now, is it the right time to ask more money or did you did they ask for money for things in the past? You know, you can't change what they asked for in the past and what passed on the, you know, I keep saying past, but it's what has passed uh, through the voters. And if the voters approve it, that's what the voters approve. Mm -hmm. You know, so some of those things, if you read them in the bond are are viable, right? You know, upgrading. But why? The I, I read it. But why is it the response? Why would the city think it's okay to ask for more money from us instead of cutting their budget and living within their means, just like we as homeowners and business owners have to do? I think it should be, you know, twofold. I think first you should be looking at where can you gain efficiencies and how are you using your resources? Mm -hmm. And then once you hit that level of efficiency that you feel like you can't really go further on that's when you should approach and, and look you know we do that from a manufacturing standpoint we're not going to yeah. install a new uh, you know twin screw extruder when we have capacity that we could gain through efficiency on our existing machines this reminds me somebody was supposed to send me the detailed budgets I got to write this down so I don't forget. I'm going to audit the city budget. I'm going to do a detailed audit of the city budget and the school board budget um, to actually highlight some of that stuff because I think people really don't understand what we're spending our money on. Um, and frankly, personally, when the city is spending money on things like flower pots and bike lanes and we're still having sewer back up into our basements and uh, and we have crumbling infrastructure, like, why are we spending money on art stuff? I, I, I'm an artist. I benefit from those things. We've gotten artistic grants. My husband's an artist. But when the city, when the people who live in the city can't afford to live here anymore and the taxes are so outrageous, why do you think it's, why do you think we spend money on things like art like city art or public art displays or flower pots like so that's what i i just don't understand how somebody can say we want burlington to be affordable and then also be for for taking money more money from people to pay for pet projects like bike lanes and stuff yeah i think you need to to look at what you spend money on and you need to spend it on the right thing at the right time i mean while those projects may be good projects they might not be timed right uh, mm. to spend money on. but overall you may want to do those types of projects but yeah. you have to make sure that you're spending the money wisely when you do spend it uh, yeah you know it, it can't be austerity oh, when, measures oh, you cut gosh. your budget but it has to be things like you know hey if a, if the bike lane makes sense uh, or city beautification to draw people in do you spend that money now when you have, say, you just said, oh, sewer backing up? You know, what is the what's what's the, the highest, you know, risk 
that you should spend on to mitigate before you work oh down i the list. will like like an like, RP there's no in way a fmea you know well i can say like no money should have been spent on the mcneil redo uh not mcneil i'm sorry the freaking stupid the structure the Moran that, frame yeah like that crap uh we never should have redone the city hall park um, if we have, if our infrastructure is so bad that it's backing up sewage into people's basements, then those are the things that should be focused on first. Ah, oh know, my it, God. I'm it, so sorry. I've gone down a total rabbit trail with you, no, Alec. That's, that's I'm just fine. like, it, it's, it's like really, some of it's hitting me right now. How silly it is. No, it, it's really about fiscal responsibility and transparency and choosing yeah. the right projects at the right time. And those projects are things that, you know, people want to do. And I respect that. I get uh, it when do you want to do them and, and when's the right time to do them is a is a different different story this is what i'm saying so you know what you like you want you guys want to redo the moran plant cool fine whatever but get private money to do it or do it not when we have sewage backing up into our basements i'm one of the people who had sewage back up into their basement so um but it's not just me i know a bunch of our neighbors have had it happen well, you know, like the police and fire department need uh, new communication equipment, you know, so things like that, mm -hmm. that enhance public safety, you know, those types of projects or, you know, we have the city put forth a really nice, uh, you know, climate change action plan. But like the firehouse has single pane windows. So, you know, we need to walk the talk and not just talk the talk as, yeah. as a city. And it's looking at where are we going to gain, you know, the best, the biggest, biggest gain for our dollar. Yep. What's the right thing to spend on at the yes. right time? Um, and okay. and that's, that's that pragmatic approach. Okay. So do you have an actual question from one of your actual possible voters? Um, <laughs> I like all questions. It, it's, it's good to ask questions. <laughs> okay. Um, oh, wait, hold on. Okay. Wait, I'll start with this question. Okay. In an effort to complete my home efficiency faster, would Alec support changing some requirements and programs for efficiency, which require you to use contractor of their choosing and just wait. Okay. Hold on. They said my home was pretty tight and I didn't need. So I think what he's asking is, hold on, Ray. I want to make sure I'm getting your question exactly right. I think he's saying that for the efficiency, they have to ask. Oh, they have to I think what he's saying is that the city chooses. I, yeah, no, I think what he's saying is, and correct me, Ray, if, if I'm wrong, you're asking if I would support people doing a DIY approach rather than having to choose a contract or right. a list to complete the projects. Right. Um, yes, I absolutely would, as long as you can meet the, you know, the requirements and you have the skill set able to do that. And that's absolutely something you should be able to do. You know, I did the insulation and air sealing uh, in my attic. I opened up the soffits on my house and put in proper vents and opened the ridge vent up on the up in my attic. And I did that by myself. I constructed the uh, you know a sealed hatch for my my drop down mm. attic hatch. And the city came, you know, not the city, but uh, you know Vermont Gas came out, did a blower door test on it, and then came back and and showed that efficiency gain. Now, if I didn't get to where I needed to be, then I would not have qualified for for the program. Uh, but mm. yeah, I think being able to do that work yourself, as long as you have the level of confidence and can complete the work satisfactorily, I don't see why you would not be allowed to do that or should not be allowed. Uh, you know, uh, you, you should be forced to hire a contractor if you can, if you can do the work. That's like right now in the city, you, you know, you need to, you, you have to pull a permit to, to change a light switch. Um, which but you ridiculous. don't have to hire a contractor to do that. You can do that <laughs> yourself. Uh, any work in a panel, you know, needs a contractor, uh, and it's dangerous. You know, if you if you don't know what you're doing, you you do run the risk of hurting yourself or others. And and I see why certain things are there. Like you have to hire a licensed electrician to work inside of your panel, but you don't to change a ceiling fan. But you need to pull a permit for it. So certain things like that is that necessary to pull a permit to change a light fixture you know according to the zoning right now it is um, but you know you're not adding a person. you're not adding a whole new circuit but to, to his question yes you know air sealing insulating doing those efficiency projects um, you know you don't need a permit to blow insulation well, into your attic and especially Ray is a contractor. That's what's funny. So Ray that he could self contract. But that's what I'm yeah, saying. I mean, it, you shouldn't need to choose one. You know, off that. I, right. I think if you can do it yourself, uh, they should foster that because that's yeah. that 
spirit of, hey, I want to do better. And you want to improve your house, not only for yourself, but people want to do it because it's the right thing to do for the environment. You know, well, it, and Ray, just for the record, Ray is awesome. Ray, I love the threshold from the, the family room to the kitchen. I haven't gotten to tell him this personally, but since he's watching, I'm going to give him a shout out. It looks so pretty. I came home and it's so pretty. Um, anybody who needs somebody to do work on their house, Ray is awesome. I shouldn't tell the whole neighborhood that because then he's going to be too busy to come do. Stuff so is this like the, uh, is this like the, you know, the driver, he's going to say, Hey, now you get one free contract. No, with, uh, no, you know, no, 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 Ray is, Ray is, uh, Ray is awesome. Um, for pe people who don't know Ray Ingram, um, he's been a very good friend to me since I moved back in 2018 and he's just really, um, really kind and really good at what he does and he really cares but i swear this isn't an advertisement i this is totally not planned but you um, know and allowing people to do that to raise point you know would help the city get more towards that goal which everybody is trying to you know the city i say everybody but the city is pushing and a lot of people are trying to push so incentivizing people to do work on their own and not hire a contractor that might be a barrier to entry to some of these weatherization projects yeah. is having to hire a contractor yep. and, and a lot of people may want to and that's great but if you want to take the project on on your own you know i was up in my attic in uh, august you know uh, it was very hot but uh we got it done i um i it's so funny uh christopher aaron said miro doesn't budget well and i'm not i'm not going to ask you to comment on that alec um i will just say it is it, it is interesting because I think this is what I've real I think I've sort of noticed or realized um, about Burlington particularly is that um, I heard this expression called pathological compassion. And it's like, we want to be so compassionate that we go overboard sometimes. Like um, I've asked even Miro publicly, like, or, you know, out at events and stuff. I'm saying, why don't you cut the budget? You know, why is it that city, uh, city employees actually make more than the average Vermonter? Um, why is it they have better uh, benefits packages and salaries than an average Burlingtonian or Vermonter? And he says, well, Erica, what do you want me to do? Fire people or reduce their salaries? And I say, yes. Like, I, I don't understand why someone who whose salary is paid with tax dollars should make more than the people who pay the taxes. Um, you know, maybe if you're some if you're the city engineer and you're the one building the roads, maybe that guy gets paid more. Um, but I just think that we are so we are generous to a fault um, and we just want to help everyone and we just want to try to make everyone's existence comfortable. And I, I just don't think that that's a reasonable goal. I don't know. I don't know. Well, I mean, if, if people are doing a really good job, you know, the people in, say, the DPW, uh, mm -hmm. you know, then we should be incentivizing them to stay and do a great job and paying them, you know, if they've been here and they're working hard then that should be something we do pay them for. You know, you want to, it's just like in, in private industry, you know, people get raises every year for cost of living. Uh, if they're really a good worker, they get incentivized to stay and to be a good worker. Uh, you don't want people leaving their jobs, whether it's in the city or private industry, to jump to another place uh, because they feel that you didn't treat them fairly when they do a good job. You know, and, mm. and my philosophy is that the goal should never be to fire people. It should be to develop them and try to raise them up. Uh, you know, so if you have people who are working really hard, uh, that's that's awesome. And they should be rewarded as such. So, you know, you have as DPW guys. As long as it doesn't guys, increase my tax dollars. Uh, but yeah, but you have guys, you know, who, are, who are on the recycle truck in snow, in the middle of snow, you know, on, on the DPW guys. And, and they are plowing the roads and they're working long hours mm -hmm. and they're there at night and they're, you know, allowing you to get out of your driveway. And, you know, yeah, very in the training, it, it takes a very long time. Very important jobs. I yeah. agree. But like police officers only make like 50 grand. I, why yeah. is it why is this, why is somebody who works at a desk in city hall making more than a police officer 
you know, I can't I can't comment on that uh, because I don't have specifics on it. What, what I'm saying is if they have, say that person there has been there 30 years uh, and they have been doing a fantastic job. You know, if you're mm-hmm. at a job for 30 years, your your wages are going to increase. Uh, then I would encourage be, you to go to the private sector where you can make more money. <laughs> well, I'm just saying, uh, you're not going to be, kept, and you're not, you know, it wouldn't be fair to say to somebody, oh, now that you're making more than this because you've been here 20 years, you're fired. Uh, that yeah, that I mean, wouldn't be fair. That wouldn't be equitable to people. And, and I don't. I, I just don't think those salary caps should even be that high and that's a separate that's a separate question on that Uh, but you know there are a lot of jobs that are done oh sorry go ahead Uh, there's a lot of jobs that are done that are difficult jobs you know police officer is is a difficult job and and i would encourage people you know counselors if they're going to be voting on things relating to police they should do ride-alongs you know same thing with the dpw maybe go down and do a ride-along with those guys filling potholes or taking out recycling and understand what those jobs are like and yeah you know, how you can help those people and then fire and police and, and everybody give them the right tools to do the job. Ensure that yeah. they have the tools necessary to do the job and listen to their feedback. You know, when you make a decision, bring them in with you because those guys are the stakeholders, those, those men and women. And, and that's, that's important true. to listen to that feedback. But if they're doing a great job, then they should be rewarded as such. The lead time for a police officer, even some, you know, lead time for any job, people in DPW, uh, firefighters that lead time for training and proficiency is long it's long mm-hmm. so you don't want people to jump to another municipality or another or into the private sector uh, when they feel if they feel slighted you know you want if they're doing a good job you want to reward them for that i mean maybe you want them to jump uh, Eric, but, <laughs> you know, and we can disagree no, on, on those I, things yeah, but no, from we'll, a pragmatic we're gonna, standpoint we're you continue to disagree on that because otherwise then the budget just keeps going up and up and up and up and up and, and that's exactly and, and how it not, is the and not, and not well. only that but these people are all uh members of of public sector unions so they use their money to get politicians elected who then decide what their salaries are and so i think that there's a really perverse relationship um with public sector unions um i i personally don't think that they should exist i'm gonna get hated for this saying it out loud um i don't think public sector if let me let me rephrase that i think if if public sector unions want to exist they should not be allowed to use money uh they should not be allowed to donate to politicians and, and we can i don't want to go off the rails on, uh, or off this type of a discussion but uh, yeah what i will say is that you know if the people are doing their job well then they should be rewarded and the long lead time for people it, you need to incentivize people to stay and to do a good job. If they're doing a good job, they should absolutely be th- sincerely thanked and, uh, you know, provided that growth and opportunity. And again, it's a partnership, right, with everybody on all departments. Uh, you know, and I look at this from from my point of view, working in the private sector and the the plant that I work in is that you want to partner with people. You don't want to have that adversarial relationship. And Mm. ideally you're giving everybody the right tool to do the job and finding out from them. That's that double loop management. You know, you listen Mm. back to them and find out, do you have the right tools for the job and gain their insights and gain their thoughts as stakeholders. Um, Ray said they won't provide financial assistance because a homeowner was doing the work. Wow. That's wild. You know, those are things that should be looked at because if you want to incentivize people to move towards that goal, you know, it's telling them, you know, Ray may maybe doesn't want to hire a contractor because he himself is a contractor or because he doesn't have the the funds to be able to do that. And therefore he may just end up living without that weatherization that hurts him, that hurts his you know comfort level, and it hurts the the movement towards the city's goal. Well, and I'm curious because my understanding is a lot of those weatherization items are 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 going to be made mandatory. Um, and so it's one of those things where, um, again, where the city council and the mayor say things that sound good and they sound positive, right? We all I don't I don't know anybody who doesn't want to have a nice, clean environment and air and all these other things um but there is a an ability to pay or not pay um so as an example if i if if this were made mandatory and i had to pay 14th i I, we don't make money on this house like just to be clear 
it is so expensive uh, to pay. Our taxes are out of control and um, we could raise our rents um, to full market rate, but we don't because we have a first responder and a social worker in one unit and a single mom in the other. And so we want to provide affordable housing. And so we pretty much break even every year. And if I suddenly have to come up with $14,000 because these thermal energy updates are made mandatory, um, I mean. You're going to push it forward. I mean, you, you, you're not going to take a loss on it. I would logically think that you would not take a loss. What do you mean? Like you wouldn't just cover the $14,000. I can't cover the four. I, I personally I mean. can't cover the $14,000. So I would be forced to raise rents at That's least I mean. to market yeah. and then and then try to figure it out i guess maybe i i, I did a i did a <laughs> i did a comedic short called the homeless landlord anybody can go watch it on my page it is silly and i joke that i go live out on the bike path because i can't afford to live in my own house but we're quickly getting there um the, yeah, the capital bond is going to increase taxes for sure um, and, uh, it, they're, they're, they're telling us that this new capital bond is going to increase taxes. Um, I think ours, if you looked at the schedule, it, it's, you know, out at the end of the bond, it lowers your taxes overall, like at the end. I've never seen a decrease in my property tax bill. So I don't know where that money goes to, but it, it, it'll be another bond that they issue or some other thing. So not once. In the 63 years that my family has owned this property, have my our property tax bill gone? Has our property tax bill gone down? So, um, but to it, again, it's just we say that we want to have Burlington be affordable, um, and yet we don't act in any way close to what would keep Burlington affordable. And I just think that that's 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 disappointing. Yeah, I know um, we want to stay in our house for a long time. Uh, you know, we didn't we didn't buy this house just to be a starter home and flip it after, you know, X amount of years. We want to yeah. stay here. We want to raise our family here. And it needs to be affordable for us to do that. Amen. Amen. Okay. Well, I've been giving I've been beating you up, Alec, beating you up talking about <laughs> stuff. Um, no, it's always a good dis it's always a good discussion, you know, you know, listening to different people's opinions, different people's questions are how you make progress. And again, I don't take feedback personally. Uh, I don't take actions, you know, people, people can say whatever they, whatever they want. That's their freedom, you know, yeah. uh, and feedback to me, as long as it's constructive, I don't mind if it's positive, negative, or indifferent. It, feedback is, feedback is great. The only well, thing you should say is thank you. And we get, so it's easy to get stuff just talking to people who agree with us. Um, and then we don't really understand why the other side thinks what they do. Why do they think that? Why do they think that's a good idea? Okay. Yes that sounds good but what about this and and it really requires to me i think more than anything what i would like to see is some diversity on the city council and i don't and i mean ideological diversity um where an actual debate can be had where people disagree and then we can come to a consensus rather than just running all the way off the cliff without anybody saying boo about it I agree. I think it should be nonpartisan and I think you should be willing to bring, you know, different ideas to the table and hash them out, discuss them. And then whoever concerns that decision, bring those stakeholders to the table and give them a voice and listen to them, actively listen to people. Yep. And bring that okay. civility back, but keep it local. You know, don't look at it on that that state or national level if it can, cannot be influenced if it's outside of your circle of influence, then don't don't worry about it. Ooh. Oh, I was going to give you crap, but I won't. I was going to, I was going to give you a gotcha, but I said, I wouldn't do that to you. So I'm not going to, um, but I'll ask you in private later the next time I see you. Um, okay. So we've come around the hour and I want to give you an opportunity to, um, take a couple more minutes to just, um, you know, give your pitch to ward seven. Um, you really, you, we do have some of your voters on here with us tonight. So this is really cool. Well, that's awesome. Um, you know, I, I'm glad people. So thank you for coming out and, and listening to me. I don't, I don't seek the spotlight. It's not something that I ever, I ever wanted, uh, but when it's necessary, I felt compelled to step up and, you know, 
having neighbors independently ask you if you would be willing to mm. put yourself out there is kind of nerve wracking. Uh, but you know, ultimately, if it if it can improve the lives of the people around me, uh, that that's the goal. So, if you want pragmatic leadership who will listen and actively listen to people and use that analytical data-driven plan, do, check, act methodology when making decisions, you know, understanding the human side of the equation as well, then I think I can bring that back to the council, that civility back to the council and keep that focus on what really matters to the people out here uh, because I'm one of the people out here mm. and my family wants to be here. We're very happy to be here. Uh, we plan on being here for a long time. And again, if I can help other people with that same vision and that same want and desire, then that's that's what I will do. And that's why I decided to to throw my name in there. And, uh, you know, it's been a really interesting time. And I really look forward to meeting more people, understanding people's concerns with the ward and with the city and how we can focus on issues together in a nonpartisan partnership type view with everybody to make progress in the city while keeping it affordable and moving towards the city's and, and the citizens goals inside the city. So thank you for listening to me. And uh, I appreciate that. I like it. All right, boss. Um, we will let you go for this evening. I wish you good luck in your endeavors and your race. Uh, your website, let me see, let me get back there and make sure everybody knows. I'll make sure that this is all in the description. Whoops. You don't want that. Do, do, do. Okay. Alexstith.com. A-L-C. A-L-E-C. Yeah. Yep. I like it. Easy, straightforward. So you got your platform. Say hi to his good looking family. Look how good looking they are. You Look know, and that. the last thing I will say is my name means helper of mankind. My parents picked that for a reason. I aspire to be that way. Um, ah. You know, and, and I'm, you know, you asked my wife about that. It's uh, it's something that I think if you can leave the place better than when you had it, then that's the way to go. Uh, so, Amen. you know, that's something that I, I think is important to me, uh, whether it's, you know, the environment or economically or socially. I think that that's, that's just something it's, it's, just try to do your best every day. That's all excellent. you can do. Excellent. Excellent. All right, Alec, I'm going to let you go. I'm going to take you out of the live stream. And I know you probably have babies to get ready. I have bed. a two and a half year old who is probably <laughs> sitting on the edge of his bed waiting for me to come in. Where's and my back. story? Exactly. Okay. Exactly. It's all the right. saddest thing, but it's also really, you know, it, it means a lot. He, he just, he'll wait for me. So I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. Thank right, you so much, night, Erica, Alex. for having me on your show. I do appreciate it. And again, alexstith.com, if anybody wants to check that out. As always, feel free to reach out. Send me an email. Send me a message on Facebook. If you have any questions, I am available. Uh, and I'd love to hear from people. Oh. And I, it doesn't matter if you live in the ward or not. Uh, you know, I'd love to hear from you and just ask questions. It's um, I'm always willing to listen. You got Thursday. Before we go, you got Thursday nights, right? You're doing a live stream Thursday or and Saturday. Uh, every Thursday Tell and Saturday until town go. meeting day, I am doing a virtual happy hour. Uh, so I am a home brewer. So come on, have a virtual beer. I'll have a virtual uh, beer with you. I have an IPA that I have right now. So, Ooh, okay. You know, is that talk, on we, your website? It is on my website. I'll have a new link updated uh, now. Oh, the last one I just did was Saturday. So okay, come perfect. on by. We can talk politics. We can talk beer. I want to listen to your concerns about what you think uh, and anybody's invited. So ask like me it. questions and uh, just we can get to know each other. I All appreciate right. that. Thank Good you. Good night, Alec. Have a great one. Bye. All right, everybody, thank you for being here with us this evening, for listening, for uh, checking out Alec, listening us get to debate about some of the tax stuff. Um, anybody who watches my channel, watches my feed, knows uh, that I am a small government conservative. And so to me, that means a lot of the things uh, and services provided by the city government, the state government, the federal government really should be provided by you. And me, uh, we should be taking care of our neighbors, not expecting some bureaucrat to do it for us. So um, that is always going to be my stance. Uh, but I do really like Alec. I like the way his mind thinks. I like that he reasons through things. And um, and you should vote for him. You should vote for him. 
on town meeting day. Um, and so as we leave this evening, uh, I'm going to leave you with our, another, uh, another, uh, viewing of our commercial for our book. Benjamin and I, uh, have our book published reasons to trust the government. Of course, it is a very, uh, light read and you should make sure to check the preview before you buy it, but you can go to amazon.com for $9.99 and be an owner yourself. All right, everybody. Thanks for coming out tonight. Thanks for being here. And uh, don't forget to go uh, say hi to Alec and uh, ask him questions. Make informed decisions. Night, everybody. This book will give you wings. wings. What kind of wings? Not like Icarus wings, like eagle wings. What about dragons? You'll have dragon's blood. You'll be able to breathe fire. Fire like the Ultra Eagle Drago Guard. This book will make you smarter. Yes. I'm not just talking honorable smart. I'm talking Nikola Tesla smart. You'll be so good looking, Brad Pitt will be jealous. Do you want to make money? How much money? Elon Musk money. That's a lot of money. People will think you're Elon Musk, but you're not Elon Musk. But they'll think you're Elon, Elon Musk because you pay taxes like Elon, Elon Musk. Musk. And you have to argue with Elizabeth Warren because she thinks you're Elon Musk. Musk. Do you want freedom? How much freedom? All the freedom. Yeah. One to America. How much freedom do you want? America. D D Double America. America.